what's going on everyone, Matthew from the right trader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Today we're going to go over our normal schedule and talk about the recent market drop. We indeed fell quite a bit here and I'm going to talk about where we're going to probably find some support. How low are we about to go? Go over all of that on the technical analysis side of things in just a second. Other than that, as far as the general market is concerned, what we're seeing is a lot of cryptocurrencies down about 10 to 15%. Uh, Bitcoin down about 9% over the past 24 hours, Ethereum down about 6%, and uh, Litecoin down about 15% over the past 24 hours. There is one exception, that is Nano, uh, that is actually going much higher. It's interesting because a lot of cryptocurrencies are falling right now, and Nano, which had a pretty massive drop um, you know, recently, is now actually bouncing. It's obviously going to be easier for Nano to move higher uh, while Bitcoin is dropping, you know, as far as the BTC related chart. It did get some bullish news. You know, I believe the seed investor of uh, Coinbase, uh, Gary Tan, is in talks with the Nano team and is really, you know, kind of integrating himself in the project. I didn't follow too much of that news. Definitely some good developments. And, you know, just the fact that we've been in this V-shaped bounce here uh, now completed back above 100,000 Satoshis, which is very impressive. Now, what we can expect as we move forward is, you know, I think we can definitely move higher from here. If we hold above 100,000 Satoshis, it is possible as well that we just make a small pullback to 100K Satoshis and then move higher or dip temporarily below 100,000 Satoshis, bounce off the uptrend line. But at this point, we're looking pretty bullish. Uh, a little bit more of the bearish scenario at this point for Nano would be some consolidation between 100,000 and 85,000 Satoshis. I, I don't see it getting worse than that. And even that scenario is really not that bad, right? Considering the fact that a lot of cryptocurrencies are falling right now. But with that being said, make sure to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. And I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video. We did great on the likes last time, and I want to see if we can get above 200 thumbs up on this video. So make sure to leave a thumbs up, guys. And let's take a look at Bitcoin now. Bitcoin is definitely looking a little bit more bearish. Uh, we do have some opportunities to bounce here that are coming up. But what happened is we broke out of our uptrending channel. Uh, that were, those were the two pink trend lines right here. And that isn't a good sign, right? We obviously wanted to remain in this tri uh, triangle formation, this channel that was going to allow us to move higher. But obviously, you have to remember that technical analysis is only, you know, kind of just a lot of guidelines for what the price should do. And you, you need to kind of wait and see sometimes for confirmation. And here what happened is we faced some resistance at the red downtrend line and we actually moved lower, lost our uptrend line support. So for Bitcoin specifically, we are back to downtrending in the short term. And I'm going to go ahead and put this longer term uptrend line in red. So you see uh, exactly in which new formation we're in, which is this symmetrical triangle formation right here. And what this means is that we definitely have room to move lower here, right? Uh, we could move towards the end of this channel, which does tend to happen with these symmetrical triangles, which is, you know, at around $7,500. But not, we, that doesn't necessarily mean that we will go that low, right? We could definitely find some support on the middle band. That's at $9,236. And that's pretty much in line with our support at around $9,000. So the bounce that we want to see here as far as, uh, you know, finding some support pretty quickly and not dropping too low would be bouncing somewhere near $9,000. If we don't bounce near $9,000, maybe go a little bit lower than that. We have quite a bit of support at uh, $8,000 as well. But if we start dropping more, you know, we're probably going to test the uptrend line. And that means that we're going to be, uh, you know, really towards the end of this formation, probably. I'm not saying that we're going to go that low. Like I said, it depends on where we're going to find some strength as we fall lower. But for, for Bitcoin specifically, it is looking likely that we come back and at least test that $9,000 area. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum now. And actually, one thing that I wanted to point out is that Ethereum is probably the best cryptocurrency right now as far as telling us what the market is going to do next. And that's because its chart formation is very clear in the sense that we're in this consolidation, in this you know bit of a pullback. And really for Ethereum, it's pretty straightforward, right? We don't wanna break out of the symmetrical triangle formation, at least in the downside. And really that's pretty much in line with not breaking below $764. If we do break below $764, of course we have some support at $700, but 
considering that this will be, you know, the second slash third time dropping uh, pretty low, we're likely going to go much, much lower and probably come back towards $500 if we drop below $764, which would require us to break towards the downside of our symmetrical triangle formation. Ethereum basically is, is just in a very clear position uh, in the sense that, you know, if it remains in the symmetrical triangle and it consolidates, that's great. The rest of the market is probably going to be in a pretty similar situation of some consolidation. And hopefully once Ethereum reaches the end of the symmetrical triangle formation, we're going to break towards the upside and we're going to see, you know, the rest of the market also uh, return to a more bullish scenario. But for now, a lot of downward pressure on the price for Ethereum. And, you know, we do have the downturn middle band, which is something to pay attention to. Let's take a look at Litecoin. And one thing that I'll, I'll just go ahead and point out is that, you know, a lot of these cryptocurrencies are experiencing a bit of a pullback here. It's definitely not good because what's kind of worrisome is that for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Litecoin, we're in this very nice uh, channel that was moving us towards the upside. And the fact that we dropped towards the, you know, broke below that tells us that we're probably going to take a bit of a hit here. And right now for Litecoin, we're actually finding some support uh, on our middle band, which is at $181. And that's actually a very interesting level because it isn't major support, right? Not as strong support as, let's say, $165. But this is somewhere where we could potentially start to bounce and maybe you know slow down the, the dropping where we might just consolidate in the middle of this range between $165 and $218 as we put in a bit of a base before we're moving higher. Uh, what is, you know, uh, you know, we have a fair chance at this point of going back towards $165, $170. Uh, just based off the fact that, you know, the middle band, while it is upturning and it is support, it's just not as major support as, say, a support level like $165, $170. As for the indicators, also looking not great, right? We we could see a bounce on the MACD. That would obviously be very bullish considering, you know, that probably mean a bounce off this middle band or somewhere around there. And that's always possible, but these indicators are definitely moving, you know, pretty quickly towards the downside. So that's something to keep an eye on. And right now, for a lot of these cryptocurrencies, you know, we're, we're not necessarily in, in a massively bearish territory, but it could come down to that if we start to fall more over the next couple of weeks. So we just have to be a bit careful here, uh, I'd say. And for Litecoin, the one good thing is that we're fully out of the downtrend line. Uh, what that does mean, though, is that we have quite a bit of room that we can move in, potentially. And let's go ahead and take a look at our next cryptocurrency, which is going to be Ripple. See what Ripple has been doing throughout all of this. It looks like Ripple is moving a little bit lower here, uh, back down towards 86 cents. There's a lot of support there. Uh, we're also coming up on our pink uptrend line. And, you know, indicators obviously moving pretty low here. What we could see is a bounce on the histogram and MACD. Uh, that would be very bullish and would fall well in line with our support that we have near this uptrend line and our 86 cent support level. So it is a logical area to bounce off of, and this is longer term uh, support. So what I will say is that definitely uh, where we want to see a bounce is here for, for Ripple, right? If we move lower, if we lose the uptrend line support, then, then things could start getting pretty ugly, especially if we drop below 65 cents. And, you know, for now, we'll just have to kind of wait and see how this plays out. But we, we are coming up on some important levels here for a lot of these cryptocurrencies, and what's going to happen over the next month is going to be very telling as far as letting us know if this was just uh, you know a pullback like any other right like we have in these markets or if we're really entering a bit of a bearish uh, period here once again I guess you could say because we've been in a little bit of a downslope right we do have to remember that for NEO we are moving quite a bit lower uh, this is pretty much in line with what I've been saying likely going to move back down closer to $100 as we move towards the end of this triangle formation and I'll go ahead and put this support level in red so you get an idea of this triangle formation that I'm talking about. Once we reach towards the end of this, we're either going to break towards the upside or downside. Uh, the downside would be breaking below $100, which would obviously be quite bearish. We also broke below the orange line on the MACD. That is a bearish sign. And, you know, if we do end up breaking towards the upside of the downtrend, that's all for the better, right? We're probably going to be moving up pretty quickly towards $139. But for now... In the, over the next few days, probably going to go closer to $100 first. Let's take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Stellar. Now, Stellar, unfortunately, has been one of these cryptocurrencies that has been acting pretty weak, right? And what we saw was a bit of a bounce here on the uptrend line, but now we're even maybe peaking a little bit under it. 
finding a bit of support there, uh, but could look like we're going to see a bit of a dip. And that is a little bit worrisome because we're coming up on the last couple support levels for Stellar. Uh, and really all we have left is this uptrend line right here. And our, sorry, our support level, I'll go ahead and put this in red. Uh, our final support level before potentially seeing a pretty nasty drop is at, let's see, 3,418 Satoshis. So if we drop below that, things could get pretty ugly for Stellar and we could pretty quickly see a drop down to 3,000 and then, you know, really start moving much lower, closer to 2,000 Satoshis probably. Let's take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Lisk. And Lisk obviously was one of the cryptocurrencies that has been doing very well, was doing very well. And now, like all these other cryptocurrencies, unfortunately, uh, wasn't able to avoid this drop, which is normal, right? Remember that these cryptocurrency markets are uh, very interconnected, and that means that they all often follow each other's movement. So what I'm drawing in right now is our symmetrical triangle that we're in, kind of like Ethereum, a uh, lot more messy though for Lisk. And, you know, indicators are pretty much bearish right now for Lisk, I'm not gonna lie. We are also holding this very short-term uh, steep downtrend line, which is kind of surprising. And we'll see if we're able to hold above $20. At this point, I'm really going to say we need to pay attention towards this symmetrical triangle that we're in. And if we're going to move towards, you know, if we're going to eventually break towards the upside or the downside, we'll have to see. Uh, we're probably going to get that information when we reach the end of the symmetrical triangle formation. And what is good with that is unless we, you know, start crashing basically over the next few days, probably going to be moving a little bit higher from where we are currently uh, since, you know, look at where the end of our symmetrical triangle is. That's at around $23. So that is something that I did want to point out and, you know, leaves a little bit room for LISC to bounce here. We do want to see it continuously bounce though uh, throughout the next week or two off the uptrend line if it gets that level. Let's take a look at Cardano. Now Cardano is kind of like Stellar in the sense that it has been acting pretty weak, actually looking maybe a little bit better than Stellar currently. Uh, it finally found some support off 3000 Satoshis. It's now putting in a bit of a base and we're coming up on our pink downtrend line, which is our short-term uptrend line. We also have our medium-term downtrend line, which is the red downtrend line right here. And we do want to see the price, you know, break above both of these uptrend lines. We want to make sure that we hold above 3,000 Satoshis especially. And no indicators now finally flattening out a bit. So we'll just have to see, but unfortunately the market is weak right now. So it wouldn't be surprising to see Cardano dip below 3,000 Satoshis. Uh, at, at this point, it's too hard to tell what's going to happen. Uh, too much of an indecision period for Cardano. We just have to wait and see and get confirmation on where we're going to start heading. We'll know within this candlestick or the next few days, pretty much. Let's take a look at our last cryptocurrency, which is IOTA. And let's see what IOTA has been up to. So currently IOTA is moving lower back towards a dollar and 47 cents. Indicators all looking pretty bearish here. I will go ahead and put in our maybe little uptrend line, see if this holds. Not expecting much though, since the market is weak, but we do want to make sure uh, nonetheless that we hold above a hundred and sorry, a dollar and 47 cents. That's the level that we really want to make sure we hold above. Uh, we could even dip a little bit lower, you know, go back to a dollar and 13 cents, but we definitely would want to bounce off one of these two support levels because if we don't, you know, we're going to be heading back under a dollar most likely. And with that being said, everyone, this is the end of the daily crypto update. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.